Welcome back, everybody. Joe Everest, the fence expert. If you've watched in my other review videos, then you know what you're in for. Jeremy goes out and finds videos that he thinks that I'd like to review for you guys at home. Reviews typically have a positive spin. We all know how many negative reviews are out there in YouTube land, and I'd like to change that. So without further review, here we go. This is Joe Everest, the fence expert. My family's been perfecting their way of building fence for over 60 years, three generations. While there's more than one way to build a fence, I'm here to share with you our way. All right, so today's video is titled, How to Install Color Bond Fence Panels. So we've gotten a lot of requests to review this type of fence uh, from other videos we've done, specifically the UK video talking about concrete posts with uh, wood fill. The comments seem to come both from South Africa and Australia. So we found one from Bunnings Warehouse, which seems to be like an Australian DIY type uh, establishment, uh, but it's how to install color bond fence panels. Let's see what this is about. I'm going to show you how to install the infill panels for a color bond fence. Materials we need are saw horses, drill driver to fix the bottom rail when we come to do that, capping to go on top of the fence when we complete it. We have a tape and pencil to measure our panel. Level, of course, to check it. Angle grinder to cut a panel if we need to. A mallet, tin snips, clamps. And of course, we need our safety gear and we need the insert panels, top and bottom rails as well to complete the job. So one thing I didn't see on here is string line. Now, if there's one comment that rose above all else on the UK, how to install the fence UK way. Uh, it was string line. If you go back and watch that video at roughly the eight minute mark, the string line makes an, makes an appearance. But one of the, like I said, the, the most frequent comment on that video is where's the string line. So on this video, where is the string line? Our first step will be to lay the bottom rail and secure that in against our posts, and then we're ready to start putting the inserts in. And then we'll just double check that our level is still being maintained. So that's interesting. Uh, so in the in the previous video, in the UK video, uh, so those guys, d &J Projects, used uh, concrete post, concrete gravel board. Some of the feedback was that they're really heavy. If they do establish a crack, that water can get in there and freeze and break. So it looks like these these gravel boards, from what it sounds like, sounds like they're aluminum. A guy that's worked with fence a lot, listening to how they clang against each other, it sound like aluminum, which would be uh, lightweight, but still prevent rot. Of course, this color bond system is completely metal, so rot's not an issue. But now, so if they're aluminum, they're going to prevent rust, uh, irregardless of what the material above it is. Perfect. And now we need to secure that to make it all rigid. Now we'll fix the other end, screwing through the post into the rail. I'm going to start putting the panels in, and as it can be a bit uh, fiddly, I'm going to ask my mate Graham to come and give me a hand, and we'll do one panel at a time as per the instructions. It's a good tip to start putting one corner in first, get the whole base in, and then tip it in on its side and slide it back to the end. You'll find it easier to fit. Okay, so they're fitting down inside a channel. My first question was, how are these things going to stay rigid? I mean, obviously the panels themselves seem a bit flimsy, uh, but they're fitting inside a channel at the bottom and on the side. I bet they're going to put a top cap on it. Uh, maybe that's enough rigidity. I'd almost want to see maybe like a middle rail, but uh, anyway, we'll see. And now we're ready to put the top rail on just to secure the first panel. So we start with the capping piece fitting from this end working our way along, popping each corrugation in, but still leaving the last one free so we have room to secure the next panel. As we put the next panel in, follow the same procedure, the lower end first, working our way across and then bringing the capping down on top. And remember to overlap it by one corrugation as per the instructions. Now we're going to put the final sheet in of the panels. It's a little bit fiddly, but with two people, you'll manage to squeeze it in and pop that top rail down. Now, just before we secure the top, we'll just check the level. 
because we still have a little bit of a leeway in that cap to adjust it if we need to. That's a good point. So it looks like the the panels, the infill, slide up inside that top cap by, you know, looks like maybe inch and a half, possibly two inches. Same thing on the bottom rail. Uh, would make leveling this uh, quite a bit easier if you're only off a quarter inch or a half inch. You could level uh, the top rail, presumably, and uh, still have enough overlap, but also keep your level. Perfect. So we're right to secure the top rail. We just need to attach the screws to fix the post to the rail. Seems like there's a lot of movement in that post as he's screwing it in. That's our first panel complete. We'll continue the process for the next stages of the fence. So now we've got a small gap at the end, so I'm going to measure the top and the bottom and transfer that onto one of the panels. So we measure for the top of the sheet and mark. We measure for the bottom of the sheet and mark. Now I'm going to use a straight edge to mark my line as a guide for my cut. That's it, we're ready to cut. So now that we've cut the last panel, we also need to cut. I don't know that the grinder is the best tool for that job. Probably something more like a reciprocating saw uh, would be maybe a maybe more efficient choice. Uh, let me know in the comments below, what would you guys use to cut one of those color bond panels? Cut a shorter top and bottom rail from this segment here to fit that space as well. And then we'll fit it up as we've done with the other panel. It might be from an efficiency standpoint that he's using one tool to cut multiple, you know, multiple items on this project. For this, it'd have to be, it'd have to be a bandsaw, right? The, I think a bandsaw would be a cleaner cut. It'd probably be arguably a little bit safer than the uh, grinder. Uh, again, let me know what you'd cut the post with. And now our final stage to dress up the fence is to fit the caps on top of the posts. So we'll just go ahead and do that. Just a gentle tap and it's in place. For our half post, we only have a full cap. So with just a small cut with our tin snips. So we just put a cut on one side and a similar cut on the other side. So now we'll just use our wrist and snap it in half. And we've got the two end cap covers. So those these posts are left quite a bit higher uh, than the top rail of the panel. That maybe that's a regional thing. Maybe that's common wherever in Australia he's installing this. But I would almost want to see that that cap on that post sit right on top of that rail, uh, rather than have the post stick up above the top rail by you know, whatever that is, 8 to 10 inches. I think it'd look cleaner if the post was brought down to the uh, top rail. So now you have a low-maintenance, very uh, serviceable color bond fence, which you can enjoy for many years to come. And that's how you complete the infill sheets into a color bond fence. Yeah, so overall, guys, I like this color bond fence system. I mean, obviously, you're going to have little to no maintenance unless, you know, Unforeseen events happen. A tree falls on it, a car runs into it. The post benefits are going to be pretty similar to the postmaster post you know we use here in the States. It's going to have, I'm sure they have warranties as far as rust and corrosion, uh, but they're obviously not going to rot. They can't, you know, it's a it's an aluminum post and gravel board. So there's not there not a lot there to corrode either. So uh, it seems like a really nice system. I'm glad you guys brought it to my attention in the comments. Let me know what you guys think about the system. You know, here in the States, we're always looking to innovate and bring the best of other areas, the, the best fence system in other areas to our clients and customers. So uh, let me know what you think about the Color Bond fence system in the comments below. Uh, until next time, I'm Joe Evers, the fence expert, reminding you that good fences make good neighbors. We'll see you next time.